In this video, you will see some features of IVMS 4200 video playback and downloading that are important for investigations, especially for casinos, which have to follow regulations that require some of these features. I will show basic playback, searching video with video content analysis, frame forward in playback, printing a captured picture, saving a captured picture, downloading video with the video player to an external drive, viewing the digital watermark in the downloaded player, capturing a picture from the player, and printing it. So let's get started. Let's start out with basic playback. Here in the control panel of IVMS 4200, we have to open remote playback. Now we select the cameras that we want to search for video from. I'll select this camera. Then we select the time frame that we want to search for video in. We can click the date or the calendar icon to modify the start and end day and the start and end time. By default, the program searches the, pr the current day for the entire day, and that's fine with me. So I'll click OK and click Search. It searches for the video during the day, finds it, and starts playing. I can enlarge this video by double clicking. Just below the video, we have some playback controls such as pause, stop frame forward, slow down, fast forward, and enable and disable audio. Below that we have the timeline. We can click on the timeline to jump to that point in time. We can also click and drag above the timeline to move it around like that. And if you want to go to a specific date and time, you can click this red bar and you can select a date and time as long as it's, as long as it's within the time frame that you searched. So I'll go to 10 o'clock and click OK. You'll see that it's going to jump to 10 o'clock. All right, now let's take a look at searching video with video content analysis. We have to click the VCA button above the timeline here. That's video content analysis playback. And there's various types of VCA searches we can do. We can search a particular a uh, portion of the video for motion is the first one. We can search, uh, draw a line and detect when that line is crossed. Even if we didn't have a line crossing analytic set up in the first place, and we can also draw an intrusion detection area to see when that area was intruded. We're going to do a line crossing detection. And then you cl click this button to draw your line. And there, this camera has um, a few line crossing um, events configured already, but to avoid those, I'm going to draw my line up here so you can see that we're going to find events that weren't triggered by the pre-existing lines. I'll do my search. And you can see the search results show up on the timeline in red. And the way I have my software set up I have it set up in the configuration to skip all the unrelated video. So it's only going to play the video where something crosses that line out there. You see the person just crossed it. And we can skip to the previous and next search result with these arrows here. So I'm going to skip to the next one right now. And then I have my pre-play time set for five seconds. So five seconds after each Segment starts, we see the line gets crossed. There is a vehicle that crossed it there. Skip to the next one. And there's a vehicle cross, crossing it there. And you'll notice that nothing crossed the pre existing lines here. All right, so now let's click, we'll go to the next one, and then we'll click the single frame button when we see something crossing the line. All right, there we go, single frame. Now we can advance one frame at a time. Say we're investigating an incident and we wanna get just the right image, so we use single frame. And now we wanna print this image so we can right click on the video, select other capture modes, and select print captured picture. It gives you this table with the captured picture, it gives you the capture time, the camera name, and you can enter a description here. Then you click print and it gives you your printer options. 
and you simply print from there. Okay, so you can print the image with some information. Now if you want to digitally save the image as well, you can use the shortcut uh, button at the bottom right here. Click this camera icon and it takes a, a snapshot and saves it to the directory that you have configured. This is the default directory for me right now. And it pops up the image with a link in the bottom right. So as long as I hover over this, it's not going to go away. And once I click on it, it opens up that directory and I can see all the captured images I've taken. I can open those and they open up with my default image viewer. And of course from there you can zoom into your images and do anything else you want. Next up we're going to download some video with the video player to an external drive. All right, but before we do that, let's go into the tool menu, system configuration, and we're going to adjust our saving directory. So we'll go to file, and here we can see the saving path for video files and pictures, and these are the default uh, paths. The C drive, IVMS 4200, video. Well, let's change that. I have a USB drive plugged in, so I want to save it to my external drive. which is my L drive. So I'm just going to change both of these. And once you save this, it's going to stay that way. Even if you unplug the drive, you can plug it back in later. It'll still have uh, the, that path saved in here, and you can export to get the external drive again later. All right, now that I have my saving path set to my external drive, let's say I'm going to export this video on my external drive and give it to someone, maybe law enforcement. So now we can download the video, right click and select download on the video. And in this mode we have, we can see the, uh, the actual files, the starting and end time, and there's an option to download the player. So we need to make sure that's checked. And we can just select one of these files. and click download. So now we saw it was downloading and it's already completed. So now we can cancel out of this and we saw a little pop up in the bottom right as well. Let's open that directory which is previously empty. Now I see it has the the player and there's my player, and it has the, the video. And whenever you download video, it gives you the video file and a snapshot from the beginning. So there's a snapshot, and there's my video file. Now, the player that I downloaded isn't the default player. I actually put this player in the directory of the IVMS 4200 installation location. And I'll show you what I did there. So here's the path of the video player that gets downloaded with the video. So you can go here, and normally there would be a bunch of files here with the for the default video player. I went ahead and deleted all those and replaced it with this uh, player. I made this portable version of Hike Vision's VS Player 7.4.0. So since I put this in here, this is what got downloaded with my video. So let's go back to my drive, the player folder, you can see there it is. Now I made this player pretty special. When we double click on this player, it's going to find the video that we downloaded, even though it's in a different folder, and allow us to play it. So let's click on the player, and also note that this is a portable version. It runs without having to install it which is nice for uh, law enforcement enforcement or whoever you're going to get the video to. So I'll double click, it extracts, and runs, and it found that video file that we downloaded and started playing it. So it's a very easy uh, process to, to uh, play the download the video in the full featured VS player. So let's play that again. Now in here we can also do things like frame forward, 
single frame forward. And we can also take a snapshot. So we can click the snapshot icon here. But before we do that, let's go ahead and go into the settings. We'll go to the main menu, settings, capture, and we can adjust the saving path. I've already adjusted it to my external drive. So I'll cancel. And when I click this camera icon to capture, it's going to uh, save that image on my external drive. So let's go back to my root folder of my external drive, and there's a captured image. Now I can open this with my image viewer. And if I need to print this, I can simply print from here. Here's my print options. And you can also right click on the file and select print there. Lastly, we'll look at one of the most important things, which is the digital watermark. A digital watermark is encrypted data in the video file that allows us to verify the authenticity of the video, which means we can verify that no one's modified the video. Now to do this, we need to do it in the VS player and we can right click on the image, go to image control and select watermark. It's as simple as that. The watermark pops up and it gives us information such as the MAC address of the device, the serial number, the channel number, and the current date and time as it plays. So now you've seen how to do basic playback as well as advanced playback with VCA searching with line crossing, motion detection, or intrusion detection. You've also seen how to do frame forward and printing a captured image, saving a captured image, how to download video with the, uh, with the player, how to change your saving path, and then how to save uh, captured images in the player and do single frame there as well, and how to verify the watermark. Great. Now I'm gonna give you one more bonus thing since we're being a fisheye camera here in VS Player, VS Player does include fisheye dewarping. So let's go ahead and play this and click the fisheye dewarping icon here. We'll make this full screen. So first we choose how the fisheye is mounted. This one's mounted on the ceiling. So that would be this first icon here. And then we can choose our display mode. So let's go ahead with the fisheye plus three virtual PTZs. That's the round, the circle plus three squares. So I click that and we get the fisheye and the three virtual PTZs. And you can see these boxes on the fisheye view. So when I click and drag those, it moves the corresponding virtual PTZ around. You can see as I look to the left, it only stays upright and it dewarps the image. And we do have a privacy zone there, blacked out with a black. I can look anywhere around here. I can move any of the other ones. And I can also click directly on the virtual PTZs and drag those around as well. So even if we have a fisheye and we only record the fisheye view, we can still de-warp the camera in playback in IVMS 4200 and in the VS player. And I can also digitally zoom in on these cameras with my scroll wheel. I can double click to enlarge it. There's also PTZ controls on the left. So you can zoom in there and zoom out. And there are plenty of other display modes. We can have a fisheye plus eight virtual PTZs or just four virtual PTZs looking in different directions. We also have the dual panoramic and additional modes. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.